Welcome back to our video series on evaluating health adaptation for a changing climate. In this video, we introduce three real-world health adaptation scenarios that will be used to illustrate evaluation best practices for the rest of our series. Let's meet our three practitioners who are evaluating health adaptations. Cassandra is a program manager who works in her City Health Department's Environmental Division. Elaine is an epidemiologist working in her State Health Department's Climate and Health Program. Jackson is a health educator who works in his County Health Department's Emergency Preparedness Program. Cassandra is evaluating a new climate adaptation to address flooding events in her city. These flooding events routinely overwhelm the city's sewer system, causing it to release untreated water into a nearby lake. Residents use this lake for both recreation and drinking water. City officials believe the flooding is causing an uptick in reported waterborne disease. To absorb the excess rainwater, city officials are piloting modifications to sewage management using greening techniques that include the addition of rain gardens. Officials expect to see a reduction in waterborne disease and have charged Cassandra with evaluating the impact on health. Meanwhile, at the state level, Elaine is evaluating a health adaptation for wildfire preparedness across her state. In the past decade, wildfires have become more frequent, larger, and longer lasting, leading to increases in respiratory disease. For the past three years, the state has implemented a program to reduce respiratory illnesses. Through a multi-tiered approach, the state climate and health program works with counties to provide outreach and training to increase protective knowledge and behaviors in at-risk communities and to improve access to respirators and in-home filters. However, during recent wildfire seasons, news outlets reported on several problems. Some residents didn't evacuate in a timely manner Others didn't know when it was safe to go outside, and still others were unaware of how to protect the air inside their homes. Consequently, the leadership in her state mandated that wildfire preparedness programs be evaluated so they can learn what works and what doesn't, and make improvements across the state. Now, we'll head over to the County Health Department, where Jackson co-leads a working group of clinicians and nonprofit partners interested in protecting the public's health from extreme heat. In recent years, extreme heat events have led to an increase in heat-related hospitalizations, 60% of which are comprised of low-income adults aged 65 and older. Those who were hospitalized often lacked proper air conditioning or couldn't afford to run it during the hot months. Together with his working group, Jackson added a new module to an existing training program for home health aides, whose clients include low-income and aging residents. This module is designed to increase the home health aide's knowledge and skills on how to better protect clients during extreme heat events. Jackson expects his evaluation will provide information to help leverage existing relationships between home health aides and their aging clients to reduce heat-related hospitalizations. We will be following Cassandra, Elaine, and Jackson's evaluation journeys for the rest of the series. In the following video, Engaging Stakeholders, our three practitioners will begin identifying and involving stakeholders as they embark on their evaluation planning process for their respective health adaptation actions.